Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Petrazic. I'm the Director of Admission here at Portsmouth Abbey. Uh, I've seen a lot of you uh, both in person, um, on Zoom, and, and over these past couple of sessions that we have. Um, tonight is our third session um, where we're going to showcase some of our students and hear about their experiences. And hopefully you were able to join us um, last week when we had a great meet and greet uh, amongst a lot of our new students and current students on Monday. Um, we heard from our faculty, uh, four faculty members, about what it's, what it's like to teach at Portsmouth Abbey um, and, and hear their experiences. We did record that. Um, and so if you missed that or if you want to see that again, uh, our faculty Zoom panel um, will be available on the accepted student page um, and also on our YouTube channel. And we're going to do the same tonight. Um, so um, you guys will have the opportunity um, to see this. Uh, again, if, if there's anything that you missed or anything that you want to listen to again, uh, and you might want to listen to it again, because I think it's going to be fabulous. Um, and what I'd like to do is, is just to quickly tell you um, what's, what's going to happen. I've asked four students um, to come and share their experiences uh, at Portsmouth Abbey. Um, and these four students represent our four forms. We have a third former, that's what we call our freshmen, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth former. Um, that's what we call our seniors. So you'll be able to hear about the entire arc uh, of the Portsmouth Abbey experience. And we have students from, from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, um, students, uh, a student who transferred in midway through uh, in, their, in their junior year, a student that's a, a day student. So all different perspectives are going to be here for you. And, and I will tell you this, uh, you know, I'm an alum of Portsmouth Abbey myself. I graduated in, in 1996. Um, I often reflect back on my experience here. Uh, and I reflect back uh, with a lot of jealousy, um, you know, the opportunities that our students have now um, in the classroom, outside of the classroom, in the amazing facilities, in, in our opportunities off campus. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And I, I look at the body of work that they put together in their, in their one, two, three, or four years here, and it's amazing. Um, they work so hard, but they do it with a sense of joy. Um, and I've asked them to, to share a little bit about their experiences and hopefully um, you will see that. Uh, and what I want to encourage you all to do um, is again, to use the, the chat function um, throughout the course of, of the, their presentations um, and ask questions. You can email, you can chat everybody, you can chat them directly at me. Um, and what I will do at the end, we'll save a little bit of time um, for questions. So if you have questions, big or small, don't be shy, put it in the chat box and uh, we'll put our students, um, you know, uh, at the end, we'll, we'll put them back up there and they can answer these questions. So if you recall from the faculty panel, we, we did ask the faculty what was the best Portsmouth Abbey class. So let's see if, if they were telling the truth. Uh, let's see if our students think that those are some of the best Portsmouth Abbey classes. Uh, but with that, again, please, please use that chat function. Um, and what we have decided to do is we are going to go in uh, reverse form order. So you're going to hear from our sixth form representative. Uh, sixth form is, is our senior class. Uh, and so I'd like to uh, introduce Ella. And Ella will tell you a little bit about her experiences here. Hi, everyone. I'm Ella Stuckey. I'm from Middletown, Rhode Island. So I'm just about a 15 minute ride from campus. Um, so I'm a day student. I am also this year's head girl and a prefect in Manor House. I am also a captain in both varsity field hockey and lacrosse, and I condition um, during the winter season. So I'm just going to be talking a bit about my experience at the Abbey and how I've grown throughout um, my four years because I am approaching the end, sadly. Um, but coming into the Abbey, I am, I, I'm guessing, what a bunch of you guys were. Um, not really knowing what to expect. I was kind of all over the place interest wise. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't super driven necessarily in a certain direction. Um, and I was excited for the Abbey because they have a very wide scope of um, options and what to take and what to um, research. And so I was really excited coming in. I, um, I kind of just jumped right into school again, didn't really know what to expect, but um, I think that was like the best way for me to do it personally. And at the school, I've had so many great experiences, so many great classes. It's, and teachers, it's impossible to choose one. I've, throughout the years, it, 
it seems like a crime to just choose one favorite class. But um, this year, I have to say my favorite class has been Marine Bio and Environmental Science with Mr. Green. I think it's my favorite because it's the most interactive class I've taken at the Abbey. Um, being on a campus that's right on Narragansett Bay, the opportunities for a Marine Bio class are really endless. In the fall, we had the opportunity to go down to the beach and take um, a quadrat sample. So we had a whole bunch of squares and we got to um, observe the species within a given square. And there was actually a lot more than you might think. Um, and then we took that back to the lab, did some research and um, came up with a lab report. And my favorite part about this lab was that it was all done as a class. We all did the lab report together. We all split up the quadrats so we would collaborate on that. Um, and that's really special for me. And I love that we had that um, opportunity. And now currently in the spring, so Mr. Green, he's actually going to grad school. So we're spending our spring term learning about what he's going to study. Um, and he's focusing on a certain type of invasive species. So we just began our first reading on them. And um, it's just a super fun personal way. And it's a really, um, it, it's a class that's really flexible um, with what the students want to do and what the teacher wants to do. And the students, my peers and I, we're trying to convince him, but I think, I think we got him. We're going to go kayaking down at the bay um, in the spring term when it gets a little warmer. So really excited for that. And um, besides academics, I'd have to say my favorite um, activity has, there's been so much again. I, I love all my sports, all my clubs, but being head girl has been a really special experience for me. I had never been part of student council before this year, um, but well, each year a head girl and head boy are elected and um, to lead the student body, to act as a mediator between faculty and students and to plan events and run assemblies. Um, and I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to lead the students because it's challenged me in ways that academics couldn't necessarily. Um, I have had to work on my public speaking and my organization skills. And this year, especially with COVID, just being um, flexible and patient and trying to work around um, restrictions and regulations. But I, it's been so fun to um, work with the students and hear their perspectives on what they want different or what they want events they have. Um, so that's been my favorite non-academic activity. Um, coming into the Abbey, I had never played field hockey before. I had never even seen a field hockey game. I didn't know how field hockey worked. So I was pretty intimidated um, coming to preseason, but I had reached out to Coach Jones, who's also great, and she made me feel right at home coming in. And so did all the girls, they were so nice. I remember my roommate for preseason was so fun and she just took me right in. She was a junior at this point, so, but she, I sat with her in the dining hall when I didn't know anyone and they, the whole team really just took me under their arm. Um, and I've loved it ever since. I can't imagine not doing it. It's been one of my favorite parts about the Abbey, even though I would have never expected to be playing field. If you told me in eighth grade, I'd be playing field hockey. I wouldn't, wouldn't have believed you. I didn't know what it was. Um, <laughs> but kind of going with that, I, I think I chose to go to the Abbey. My brother, um, did go here before me, but I think I chose to go to the Abbey because of the community that you felt immediately when you meet someone. Or I remember my tour walking around, everyone looks up, smiles, waves. It's just, a, it's a warm place. And I think if you ask any student at the Abbey, they'll tell you the same thing. It's, there's just constant smiles and very few people have their phones, their head in their phones looking down while they're walking to class. It's always, you're walking with a buddy, you're, like you're talking, you're having a fun time, even just in between classes. Um, so that's definitely my main reason that I chose the Abbey. And kind of transitioning from when I was in eighth grade, looking back to when I was an eighth grader to how I would describe myself now, is I would definitely say that I'm much more independent. Um, the school has taught me how to 
how important it is to manage my responsibilities and stay on top of my academics as well as my extracurriculars and um, something I couldn't have done before. And kind of adding on to that, I've learned to balance that academic and social life a bit better. I remember freshman year, I think I was a bit too social and I wasn't studying enough. Um, but then sophomore and junior year, maybe I was a little bit too far the other way, focusing too much on studies. Um, but now going into my senior year, I definitely have, when I was going in, I definitely had a better mindset and knew how to um, tackle the workload. And I think that the school greatly helped me with that process. Um, and I also think now this, I've really gotten the opportunity to learn what my interests are and my passions. And the, what I love about the Abbey is you kind of start broad with your classes. There's a, a range of classes you take. And then as you get older, you can be pick more specific courses to areas of study that you prefer and someone to learn more about. And so I think that's been really great learning um, to explore um, and narrowing my interests down, which the Abbey has been very supportive of. And to end this off, I'd say that a Portsmouth Abbey student, there's three things I'd say. One is a community builder. Everyone is trying to help one another. It's, I know that schools can either be said to be like super competitive against one, like students competitive against other, or um, more community-based. And I would definitely say we're more community-based, even though at times to make each other better, that is, does involve competition with one another. Um, but it's a perfect balance and you never feel stressed um, with your, like with what your other, um, like you never feel in competition in a stressful way, I guess I'm trying to say. Um, and kind of tying into that, the second thing I'd say is hard working. Everyone is very driven. So you, um, it, it motivates you and everyone's genuinely trying to improve themselves, whether that's academically or athletically or in um, the theater, whatever it may be, everyone is um, super hardworking. And lastly, I'd say everyone is fun. Like we have a great school spirit. Um, yes, there's a lot of work, but the weekends are always a blast. And like I said, in between classes are always a blast. Um, a highlight this year has been, we opened up the Raven Quad, which is behind Mr. Petrasek's head. You can actually see the quad. Um, so we've decorated that with lights and bonfires and it's been a super fun COVID safe um, way to all get together. So those are my three things. And yeah, thank you guys for listening. Awesome. Thank you, Ella. That was great. I, I appreciate your insights there. Uh, as you come into your last couple of months here at Portsmouth Abbey, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, I asked Ella to do this. Um, normally when we do this, we do this in person. And, and she, uh, she did this when she was a third former or a freshman uh, in front of an audience full of people. So she got to, she got to bring it in doing this and, and close it out doing this. And I, I appreciate that. Um, we've got a couple of questions in the chat room, which are great. Keep those coming. Um, and we are going to transition um, to our fifth form. That's our junior year. Uh, and Zena, you're going you're gonna to kick it off. Hi, guys. My name is Zena. I'm from Nigeria, and I'm a transfer fifth form student. Um, I'm a boarder. This is, like I said, my first year. And um, this has been nothing but amazing. I play soccer in the fall track in the spring, and then I do conditioning in the winter. Um, I came from a school called Avantikol back home in Nigeria, and I could say before I really, before I came here, I was like, I used to procrastinate a lot. Like I just remember saying, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that later, I'm gonna do that later. But coming to the Abbey and seeing all the time that's been set aside, as long as you make it for one thing, it's like I've really grown in a way that it's like, I know what to put first. I know what to, how to prioritize my things, which I think is like one of the really biggest things I've learned being here. Um, I would say in terms of like my favorite things towards school education, my favorite classes would be, and like Ellen said, like it's really hard to choose between all of them because all my teachers are amazing. All my classes are amazing. But I would definitely say every time people ask me these two, 
Um, it would be Spanish and pre-calc, which is Miss Hall and um, Father Edward. And for Spanish, it's like, I've never been more excited to do homework. I've never been more excited to be like, yeah, during study home, I'm going to do my Spanish homework. Like, I'm not one that's like excited to do homework, but Spanish, I'm always, I, I could do Spanish homework anytime if you ask me. Um, and Miss Hall is really, she's really fun, really cool. Like, she's so eager to teach you. She makes sure you understand. And that's what, one thing I love about her. Um, for Father Edward, who's my pre-calc teacher, I've never seen someone that's so calm with you. Like, if you know me, I'm not really good at math, but Father Edward has done nothing but take his time out to really, like, make sure I understand it. And that's how all our teachers are here. Like, they really want to make sure they get the best out of you, which is something I really love. Like, I honestly did not like math before I came here, and now my math grades are good. So um, that's one thing and that I really, really like, and that's why those are my two favorite classes. Um, but outside of academics i would say my favorite thing or one of my favorite things to do would be playing soccer honestly playing sport any sport but playing soccer that's my favorite sport and that's also reason being when i was new um one of the first things i really got to do was like kind of like more people in the school was preseason, and preseason was my soccer team was like one of my favorite like favorite teams i've ever been on those are like my first friends in the Abbey, just because like obviously they came to school before everyone else, but I was like welcomed onto a team, onto the varsity team with so much love. I felt so comfortable. I felt like I had been with these people for some time, like the way we played, the connection and everything. It was just good that I felt like I had been on the team for such a long time, which was something I loved. Um, Mr. Dr. Zinz and Mr. Kaplan, they were always like, really eager to make sure yes you're doing what you're meant to do also checking up on you making sure you were straight and that was something that like it just stuck with me um for the abbey i honestly never got to see it in person just because of covid and everything but i just remember having my interview with miss lemay and like she was the sweetest and it was like yeah i think i want to come here and then i also remember seeing like a lot of the virtual tours online like i literally stuck the school page and it was like, I just, it felt like that was, this was where I needed to be. And that was like me feeling like that. I was like, yeah, like this is where I want to go. And I remember getting the package I got home from school. And then I saw the package on my table and I was like, oh, wow. Like there were a lot of things inside, different notes from people. And I was like, they really want us to come, which is what I love about the Abbey. Like they love each and every one of their students because they do it for each and every one of the accepted students, which was something that was really like, you know, it was an eye opener. It was something I definitely kept in mind when I was choosing the schools. And plus, I cannot like say why I chose the Abbey without the scenery, because the scenery, if anyone knows here at the Abbey, is really, really beautiful, especially the sunset. Yeah, I have some rainy days, but I would definitely say the sunsets are some of the most beautiful things I've ever seen before. Um, my most unexpected experience. For some, for me, the way I see myself, it's like, I don't know if I would say it's really easy for me to make friends just because like, I've been with the same people since I was literally so young. So it's like making friends for me, I thought it would be hard being from a different country, being from a different, different, being different entirely. But I came to the school and after like two, three weeks, I felt like I had been here for time. I felt like I started school with them. Everyone is so nice. Everyone is like so welcoming. Everyone wanted to make sure you're good. You have what you need. You're not alone. You know where your classes are. Like they would go to sit with you during lunch if you're the only person, but I don't think you would ever be the only person. Um, everyone is they were always going to walk with you, make sure everything was good. Like I just felt like they were so welcoming in every way they did. And like that was one of the reasons why, like, you know, it was really it was unexpected because I didn't think I would like have so many friends by now. Um, definitely now the way I see myself, I would definitely say I've grown independently. I've grown more confidently. Um, I'm more, I'm stronger in sports um, spiritually because they really like the monastery and everything has really like brought me closer to God. And also education wise like i feel i've learned so many things that i probably wouldn't have learned before um even just being with house parents being with your friends like it's such an eye opener and like you learn more things which you probably wouldn't have seen yourself like learning or you know like you wouldn't have known before 
which is something I really love. And for Portsmouth Abbey students, I've never seen like people just walk past and everyone is like, hi, hey, what's up, this and that. You're literally going from class to class and there's someone going to be with you. Someone is saying hi, people are holding the doors for you. Like I said, if you're alone during lunch, it's like, Someone is going to talk to you. Someone is going to go sit with you. You're going for sports. People are there with you. Even while you're at sports, like you make new friends every day. Like up till today, I'm still making new friends, which is like how awesome it is. Because it's like you would get to see like at the end of the day, at the end of maybe your four years, you would see that you kind of know everyone. And it's like you may not be the closest, closest of friends, but it's like you would definitely like every student kind of has, has an impact on you, which is something that like, you know, it's really, it's really good just because, like, no one ever wants to feel alone, and I've never, ever felt like I was alone. Even I know some people that they're, like, a bit of homesick, and it's, like, I can always talk to them. You have people that are always willing to talk to them, house parents, prefects. It's, like, every, you have someone to talk to all the time, bad or good, so, yeah, that's, that's my experience at the Abbey so far. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zena. I appreciate that. Um, and we're going to keep going down the line. Now we're going to our fourth form. Um, that is, uh, that's our sophomore class. Uh, and so I'm going to introduce Jack and Jack's going to tell you about his fourth form year. Okay, so hi, my name is Jack Baird. Um, I'm a fourth former at the Abbey School. And this is my second year attending this school. Um, I'm from Riverside, California, which is like like hour from LA. So that's definitely cool. Um, before coming to the Abbey, I was really hesitant. Um, I didn't really know much about the prep school life or any of that. But, you know, when I came to the Abbey, it was really close. Like the community was really close together and um, it was really cool. So, um, yeah, it turned out to be the best fit for me. And, you know, that's why I ultimately came here. Um, I would say my favorite class would be, I mean, all my classes are good, but I would say it's either chemistry or French with uh, Miss Fontana and Miss O'Connor. Um, I love doing hands-on assignments, so that's why I really love chemistry, um, especially being in the lab, trying out like new solutions or looking through a microscope. It's definitely awesome. Um, whether like, you know, we can learn about the periodic table or bonds or, you know, chemical solutions, it's really cool. Um, the sport I play here is hockey, but I also play football and lacrosse. So for all the students coming here saying, they only want to play um, one sport or that's, that sport's only for them. Just like make sure you're uh, trying out new things, you know, because when I did football in the fall, really, I didn't know what I was going into, but it turned out to be one of the best experiences I've ever had here. So that's awesome. Um, my most unexpected experience would probably be joining a club. Um, I was really hesitant at first. Uh, I didn't know really what the clubs offered here at Portsmouth Abbey, but uh, I joined Alexio Club, which is basically a Bible study, and it's really cool. Um, you get to share your interests with uh, friends that, you know, share the same ideas as you and same thinking. So, yeah, um, uh, I would say I decided to attend Portsmouth Abbey because of the beautiful campus. Um, we live right by a bay, so that's cool. And when I, my first year coming here as a freshman, I, uh, was introduced to the science building which was just being built and science is probably one of my favorite courses as i told you and yeah so that was pretty awesome um i'll describe myself now as uh, more social because this um the school is really closely knitted together there's only what 300 kids here so you get to know everybody's face everybody uh, you get to socialize with everybody pretty much everybody knows your name um I, the Abbey made me more invested in academics and sports, really. I really wasn't much into, you know, I didn't really know much about the academics here, but it's really rigorous, which challenges at the same time. So that's awesome. Uh, I'll describe a Ports with Abbey student as, you know, they're unique in their own way, right? So we have students from all across the country and it's cool to know their experiences before coming here and it really gets you uh, an eye-opener for you, for people who, you know, you've never seen before, right? Uh, yeah, but to sum this up, uh, the school, we're, we're all really a family here. You know, we treat each other the same. We help each other out when we're, we need help. And 
I think that's really what matters at the end of the day. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. And now um, we are going to go to uh, the newest member of our panel. Uh, and, and we're going to hear from a, a third former, that's a freshman, uh, about his first, um, you know, two, two terms here on campus. Uh, so with that, Bo, take it away. All right. Hi, I am Bo Hounstein, a third former here at the Abbey. I board here because um, I'm originally from Colorado, actually. Um, and uh, I have so far had a great experience. Um, before the Abbey, I think I was definitely a little conserved, more to myself, um, a little, little outgoing socially, but I just stuck with my base friends that I'd had throughout my life. Um, I've always seen myself as a relatively hard worker, but before the Abbey, I was definitely a bit of a procrastinator. I, um, I didn't really know how to organize myself and things were pretty rough when it came to planning. But as I came to the Abbey, I was able to learn how to overcome my issues and grow as a person as a whole. Um, I, I'm obviously only a third former, so I haven't been here very long. But as far as I can tell, my favorite class is uh, Mr. O'Connor's Intro to Lit class. He's really a funny teacher, but I've also been able to still get a lot uh, academically out of his class. He really taught me how to read closely to a text and be able to take a really deep meaning uh, from anything that I'm reading and really notice patterns that I wouldn't ever have seen last year. Um, for example, right now we're about to hop into the Odyssey, which should be really interesting to see where Western culture really started. And I think for me, that'll be really cool to dive into that much deeper with Mr. O'Connor. Um, uh, outside of academics, I also play tennis, squash, and soccer. Um, my favorite of the sports I do would definitely be tennis, just because I love, you know, being outside uh, in the spring. The, uh, being near the bay, the tennis courts are right near the bay, and it's, it's really just fun. I've made a lot of friends on the tennis team, and I've also improved a lot. I, I mean, I used to do a little uh, summer clinics back at home, but I've learned how to get some, some, uh, some playing going with my friends, and it's been very good. On top of that, I do also play a musical instrument. I play the French horn. Um, to me, I thought, I thought it would be kind of tricky going to a prep school like this with all the sports and the academics, but I've totally been able to find uh, time for myself to get into the practice room and get myself practicing. Uh, on top of that, the music teacher is very supportive towards me. They've, they helped me get into Allstate, which was really nice of them. They really set that up for me, and it was a really great experience. Um, on top of that, I also joined the Lexio Club that Jack was talking about, and I was able to, I never really uh, was very religious at all, but I've been able to kind of understand religion, my religion more, how I believe, uh, how I believe in Jesus, and uh, it's really been an opportunity to open up with my friends and talk to them. I think uh, for my Abbey experience, the most unexpected thing that I did was soccer. I, I don't think I ever saw myself playing high school soccer. Uh, I played a little bit when I was in like second grade, but I don't think that really counts. It, it really was tricky to get into it, especially right at the beginning of the year, trying a new sport with all these people around me that kind of already knew how to do it. But I really got in there. The coaches were supportive of me. I was able to start learning to get things down. But most importantly, the team was very accepting towards me. And even though uh, maybe if I, there was actually games, who knows if I would have made it on the field. But uh, I really have made some good friends on the soccer team, and they've helped boost me in soccer. Um, when choosing the Abbey, 
I obviously I knew a lot about it because uh, my dad went here, but it was not his choice. It was completely mine to go here. Uh, he was just simply uh, a one that told me about it. He told me about the community that he had when he was here and it sounded exactly like what I wanted to have because it was, he said it was just accepting and he had a great time making friends and just hanging out with your friends all the time, which is exactly what I really wanted to, to become better at. Um, and I, I definitely, when I did my tour, I noticed that people were really accepting and my dad was right. Um, so eventually I chose it with or without my, my dad's opinion had nothing to do with it. It was all me. Um, on top of that, the academics as well. I mean, I've actually learned how to get myself organized and I have learned so much so far. I can't imagine what the next four years are gonna be like. Um, yeah, so obviously I've, I think I've already touched it a little bit, but I'm much more of a different person. I think the idea that when I get out of class, in between class, I'm always with my friends, being able to bond with them at all times. If I want to go to my room and hang out, sure, whatever, but the opportunity for me to go out in the common room and just talk and have a great time is just right there, and it really has incentivized me to become more of a social person as a whole. I've also become even more of a harder worker. I feel very motivated by my teachers to get through the best I possibly can in academics. And I've also been working really hard to get better in sports. And obviously organization, huge, hugely improved because I now have my responsibility to organize my day, when I'm going to do work, when I'm going to go practice my French horn or, or anything like that. I really have to lay it out for myself and um, be responsible for holding myself accountable. Um, and overall, I've met lots of different people here. Um, I wouldn't say there is one type of Abbey student. I, everyone I've met, I've gotten to know very well and everyone's very different, but a couple of things in common are for sure that everyone's pretty hardworking, whether in academics or anything else, um, uh, athletics especially. Um, and especially in the first couple of weeks, everything was just super, super open. And I'm not saying it's not open still, everyone still always talks to each other. But I remember those first couple of weeks I was not, I was still a little bit conserved with myself. I didn't go out and really make a, make a huge uh, commitment to making friends, but I didn't have to because the friends were, it was like they were already made before. Um, I've changed spiritually as well. I've learned a little more about how I can be a little more religious in a understanding life in that way. But that's pretty much how I have improved myself. I yeah, I don't think that I don't think that anything else really has changed for me. And that would be my Abby experience so far. Awesome. Thank you, Bo. Um, we've got uh, we've got some great questions um, that are coming in um, and in, in the chat box. So I'm gonna um, start firing these away um and uh let's see the, the first one um how does it feel to be in a dorm um especially for the first time so Zena, why don't i throw that question to you how did it feel to be in a dorm okay so being in a dorm it's like one of i just i love it just because like you're surrounded by like some of your friends whether you're close to them, whether you're not close to them, it's kind of like when they say home away from home, that's your family. Like your dorm literally is a home away from home. The school is a home away from home. Um, I know after I think your first year, you're allowed to pick your dorm. So I know it's like really, it's fun when you guys, you and all your friends are like in the same dorm, right? And like also meeting new people as well. So I know in my dorm, there's some people that I wasn't, I didn't know before 
they moved in or before the terms changed. And it's like being in a dorm with everyone, talking to everyone, we have different dorm activities, right? It's like, you guys are all together. Those are like your sisters or your brothers, really close friends. It's like, there's always gonna be someone there in that group you could talk to. Um, I know we have the Ravens games where we kind of like each dorm competes against each other dorm. And it's like, that's just, it's a team bonding kind of thing where it's just like you guys get closer, different activities go on. And honestly, I just love it. Like I'm happy I'm a boarder. Great, thank you. Um, going along those lines, um, we have another question. Ella, I'm gonna kick this one to you um, since you are the head girl here, student council. Uh, what's your favorite weekend activity that you've, that you've been through? And, and you've got COVID weekend activities, but you have experienced no COVID weekend activities. So what do you think? Yeah. Um... I think I'd have to say that for no COVID weekend activities, um, the dances have always been super fun, whether there are casual tuck dances on um, the weekends where, or the more formal ones, such as semi or prom. Um, they're always super fun and a great way to get the whole school together. And as for during COVID, I'd probably have to say the food trucks. Um, each basically every weekend we'll have a new food truck come through and it's always something different there's pizza there's ice cream there's so many things that um we've had come and it's been a great covid safe way to get people outside and try some yummy food great um speaking of weekends bo i'm gonna kick this one to you how do you feel about Saturday classes? All right, to be honest, a lot of my friends back home peg me with this all the time. They're like, how can you do that? And to be honest, I don't know because I did just right over my head. I forget that that's not even normal because everyone around me is doing it as well. I, I just it totally forget, I just forget that it's not normal. Um, on top of that, it's you get out of class and you're already with your friends. It's not you know, you, there's no travel times to go get to your friends or anything like that. You can just go make a plan and do something right there. So to me, the little half days on Saturdays are no big deal. To be honest, all they do is just get me out of bed and doing something on a Saturday, whereas I normally wouldn't. All right. Um, Jack, um, question that came in. Um, how did you feel living with a roommate for the first time? Um, it was definitely new. I've never had a roommate before, but uh, my roommate freshman year was from Cayman Islands, so I got to experience some of his um, like experiences from being international, so that's definitely cool. Um, yeah, we basically, having a roommate, you know, you spend most of your time with them, so you get to know them, really just share your passions for you know, your classes, for athletics, so definitely. So it's a really cool experience. Good. Um, and then a question that, um, Zena, I think this is tailor-made for you. Was it difficult to transfer from a different school, um, in your case, in the 11th grade? Um, hmm, I mean, I would say there were some challenges in like some, when it came to like school-wise, like education-wise, like um, something like history where I was already learning like Nigerian and European history and to change it to American history, I did struggle with that a bit. But I mean, like I said, your teachers are always willing to help you. You have conference periods. So if you really don't understand anything in your classes, you'll be more than happy to help you. But um, in terms of like friends, just adjusting to the whole lifestyle over here, it was, it was pretty decent, I would say. Like there was nothing that I was too scared about or there's nothing that has made me like be scared, like, oh, I'm here and this and that. And um, yeah, everyone is really considerate. So it wasn't really hard, I would say. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Ella, um, since you're almost at the end of your Portsmouth Abbey experience, this one's for you. What advice would you give to a student that you wish you knew before coming in? Hmm. I would probably say just to um, not be afraid to try new things. Everyone else around you is, whether that, I saw a question come through about trying a new instrument, whether you want to try a new instrument or whether you want to 
um, participate in a play when you've never done that before or um, try a new sport like I did. I'd say that's the biggest tip is to just really immerse yourself in the Abbey, take advantage of all the opportunities that there are and um, try to meet as many people as you can because the great thing about those extracurriculars are you're meeting people that aren't necessarily in your classes or in your dorms, but it's just expanding your um, friendships at the school. So immerse yourself at the Abbey. Great. All right, we've got a couple other, uh, th these, there's some great ones coming in. Um, you guys are, are doing an awesome job here. Um, Jack, um, this is sort of along those same lines, um, but when students face a challenge um, in, in school, um, how, do you, how do you deal with them? And I guess that challenge could be anything from um, you know, academic to, to personal or, or anything in between. Um, so basically we have built-in conferences during the week. So let's just say you're stuck on your math homework, for example, or you need uh, tips on your next, next test. Uh, you can go to these conference hours during the middle of the day, uh, ask your teacher some questions and they're more than glad to help. Um, I use my conference periods all the time. I mean, I can go to whatever teacher I want, ask whatever questions I want and they'll pretty much answer all of it. So definitely recommend uh, going to conference hours if you never need help. Great. Uh, have you had just a follow up uh, question? Have you ever had like a, a super tough class where you've had to go to lots of conference periods? Um, yeah, math last year. <laughs> okay. What math class were you in last year? I was in algebra two. Okay. So algebra two last year, you, you took advantage of, of your teacher's time during conference and it got you through? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Helped my grade. Good. All right. Um, Bo, um, here, here's a question from you. Um, you're coming from Colorado. Um, was it hard to adapt to being away from home um, and, and, you know, sort of um, in, in a new environment? And also a, a follow-up question that comes through, um, uh, did you ever get homesick? For me, I have never like really felt weird being here or definitely have felt weird, but I've never felt uncomfortable here. Um, you know, obviously Colorado is far away from New England and it, things are definitely different here. Um, and the community here is uh, not the same as my community from my old school, but it was so inviting and welcoming uh, that I, I never had an issue adapting and I adapted almost instantly. Um, also, yeah, homesickness, I really, I haven't felt too much homesickness, but I know if you do, there's tons of people around you that are there to help you. You can always call your parents if you ever want to speak to them and, you know, check up on them. That's always really nice for me to do, being so far away from them. Um, but really homesickness hasn't been a huge issue for me and I haven't really seen too many other people have an issue with it, but there is tons of people, close friends, roommate, especially if it just comes on you right then, right there, they can be there to comfort you. And it's, it's definitely, uh, not terrible at all. Great. Um, Zena, uh, going back to the top here, a uh, question for you. Um, is it difficult to follow the dress code? Um, generally, no. I think the dress code is, is pretty diverse, I would say. Just because like, if you actually look at the dress code and like what you can and can't wear, you find that you're really just like dressed semi-formally. So it's not like, yeah, you have to wear a tie, suit, well, at least for girls, like, <laughs> but like, it's like, you could still wear what you want to wear, look decent. I mean, of course you have, yeah, it has to be collared or like a turtleneck or button up. But I mean, if you, when you find things you do like, and you see that it's like, you know, um, semi-formal, like you just try to look decent with the dress code. I don't think it's really hard at all. Like when I came, I didn't know the dress code. But it's like, when you find out here, you're like, oh, it's not that bad. You could wear a dress. It just has to be decent men. You could get collared tops and then put like a pullover over it. Like you can make it the way you would like it, right? But it's not anything too crazy. Like there's no uniform. So, I mean, you just have to be creative, I guess. Okay, great. 
Um, Ella, um, question that's uh, specific for you here. Um, do day students feel left out at all? Yeah, I definitely think that was one of my biggest fears coming into the Abbey was um, attending a boarding school. I didn't know what that would be like, but I have never once felt left out. I, one of my best friends is from Alaska and I spend so much time with her. I have so many border friends. I never feel, I've never felt left out. And I think one of the main reasons that that's the case is because as a day student, you can really personalize your time here. Um, I could be here up until study hall, like after sports, if I want to go to the dining hall, get food with my friends and then go back to the dorm, hang out in their room or get, or do some work, whatever. I can be here very late and get here for breakfast in the morning. So I may not be sleeping here, but, um, I've, I've never felt like I've missed out as a day student now. Great. Um, Jack, I've got one for you here. Uh, this is a two-part question. Uh, the first part is, how do you think the hockey team will be next year? And the second part is, how do you balance your schoolwork and sports? All right, so basically this year, we have probably the most amount of recruits coming that I've had in the past three years. So our team's definitely gonna be better. It's gonna be more challenging for people to make the team. Um, our team hasn't really been strong in the past, but. You know, we keep on getting better every year. Um, that's definitely great. So you have a fun time with this program. Uh, uh, Mr. Skelly is a great coach. Mr. Fennell, too. So that's definitely exciting. Um, yeah, and basically we're going to, you know, we're going to be trying to be playing harder teams, get into better tournaments. So, yeah, that's great news to hear. Um, Mr. Chazza, can you repeat the second question? Oh, how do you balance your, your work? your schoolwork and your sports you're playing three sports oh so basically i had a hard time you know uh finding out that problem freshman year with time management and all i used to you know wait until all my homework for study hall but sometimes that's just not the best uh thing to do you want to really balance out your life with here at the abbey so let's just say you have more homework than you think that can fit in a study hall well you know between um class periods or between that little block for a like music block at the end, you can do some homework. So you can really just balance out stuff like that. And, um, you know, make sure you're ready for your athletics, but at the same time caught up on your homework. Great. Um, Bo, question, since this is the closest, you're the closest to this day. What was the first day of school like? Do you remember? Um, it was, it was kind of a blur, to be honest, uh, because <laughs> everything was happening so fast, but it, you kind of, you get there, they took you through, I'm sure it was different for me because of the whole COVID restrictions going on, but you go through, see the campus, and then, you know, you unpack into your room, and then, boom, there you go, you're dropped off, and you're there to make some friends. Uh, you have an orientation groups that you go to for the first couple days, uh, and they teach you how, about when you go to meals, what the classes are like, where you go around, just daily. Um, but otherwise, uh, making friends was kind of just up to being around and seeing people. For me, at first, I had a little bit of a tough time, like, getting myself out there to meet people, but... I eventually found that I didn't really even have to because there was um, always people like willing to make friends. No one closed themselves off, like made a friend and then closed himself off from everyone else. Everyone was open to make friends and it, it really went well. I didn't have too many complaints about the beginning of school. Okay. Um, this is, this is a, an interesting question. Um, when when do you sleep in? What's your, what's your time to sleep in? What time do you guys wake up in the morning? For me, I usually aim for like seven because I like to I like to be up for a while before I go to school. But to be honest, I, I sometimes waver from anywhere between seven to seven fifty. <laughs> seven fifty is like the kind of rush out the door, no breakfast, but. Um, you can, anywhere in between there for me is usually when I wake up. Okay. 
Any, any, uh, you know, uh, well, Ella, you're driving to campus. What time do you wake up in the morning? Um, similar to Bo, it depends on whether I'm going to breakfast at school or, or not. Um, but usually around like 6.30, I'd say. Okay. like 15 minutes. What about, what about, so tomorrow's Thursday. Yes, Gina, what so time do you wake tomorrow, up on Thursdays? Um, for Thursdays, we have like the general sleep in, so class starts 9.05. Um, so I think I wake up around like 8.30, 8.20, around that time, and I go for breakfast. I mean, sometimes I do wake up earlier, around like my normal 7.20, just because I don't want to get out of that habit. So yeah, around 8.30, 8.20 on Thursdays. Okay. Um... Good. I don't know who to pick for this next one. Any, any four of you, uh, can you talk about some art courses that you've taken? Jack, Ella? Um, yeah, so basically I'm taking fundamentals of art right now as a sophomore. And, uh, you know, it's a really exciting class. Uh, opens your eyes up to the art world and potentially you can keep on going on from there if you're still interested. Um, we're doing like, it's, it's, it's all sorts of things. We're doing painting, you know, self portraits. So that's def definitely interesting. Uh, Mr. Clisto is the um, teacher for fundamentals of art and he's a great guy, um, really connects with you. And he's just overall a great teacher. So, yeah. Great. Ella, have you done ceramics or photography or anything? I have not, but um, to add on to that, I guess I would just say also there's art club after school in the winter which, as I said earlier, I do conditioning in the winter, but this past winter after I do go to conditioning earlier and then stop by art club, which was super fun. And again, Mr. Callisto is in charge of that and he's super welcoming and you kind of have um, free reign to do whatever you want, um, make whatever you want. So super fun. Nice. Um, so a couple of questions uh, about roommates. Um, in terms of, I know Jack spoke to, to this earlier about having a roommate. When you're a new student and you, and, you, and you show up on campus, you have no idea who your roommate is, right? Bo, you had no, no idea, right? Jack, no idea. Zena, you were a transfer student, right? No, no idea. Um, and, and so that is something, initially your, your roommates are, are assigned. Um, and then, and then um, you, when you arrive on campus, you, you meet them um, when you're first there. Um, and then after that, you do have the opportunity to pick who your roommates are. Um, so I think that's one of the most exciting parts about starting a new school is, is meeting all sorts of new people. Um, and then a couple of questions about homework. Um, in terms of, of the, the sort of the amount of time, um, Bo, um, in terms of your, your homework, what happens if you don't finish it? Have you ever gotten to that point where you don't finish your homework for the next day? Um, usually I have it all done, but if you don't finish by study hall, uh, there's like three good options. One is, you know, you can ask for a couple extra minutes after lights out and really try and get that done. If you can't do that though, I have attempted to do like waking up early and doing it in the morning. Uh, that's not usually my favorite, but if you have a, um, if you, if your homework is due after conference period, if you're not visiting a teacher to check up or ask questions, conference period is also very valuable for getting some extra homework done. And just like in between periods have been useful for me if I don't get any, uh, go, get everything finished. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get it done. Zena, you admitted to being a procrastinator. Do you get everything done? Um, yes, I do. I also said something about like learning how to prioritize your work and that has really helped me. So I come back from school and instead like, instead of like spending, let's say like an hour talking to my friends, 20, 30 minutes would be good and I go do my homework. I mean, now sometimes I say, yeah, I'm going to go do my homework and I don't really end up doing it. But I mean, that just, I, at least now then I know I have to do my homework. So and also keeping it, I don't like waking up early and I don't like sleeping late just because I really do love my sleep. So it's like, I would want to do what I can to get the work done. And I know like in a lot of my classes, we have um, pop quizzes or quizzes every week, every other day. So, I mean, 
you don't want to fail, so you do have to do your homework. And a lot of the pop quizzes are related to your homework, which kind of motivates you more to do your homework so you get your 100 on your quiz. So stuff like that just contribute to, like, me doing my homework earlier than I should, like, now I don't have any homework this night, so I could just read. I did everything before. <laughs> Especially Wednesdays, having half days of school and not really, like, having games to play kind of get out of sports earlier than you would on a normal day so it's like that gives you extra time so it's all about using your time wisely great um we got a couple more questions another one i'm going to throw up there um any any of you for uh experience community service at all well bo not you not you this year Zena, obviously uh, jack or ella any experience with community service a, a, a goose egg um, I'm not doing community service, but I'm thinking of taking community service alongside track. And um, one of the things I know we're gonna we do, um, we write cards to different homes, different. So last time I know we did the um, St. Jude's where we wrote like Valentine's cards to them. And so I know we do stuff like that when we meet up. And then also there's this site they go on to and you kind of pick what you wanna do. So I know some of my friends are like tutors, some are like helping read or write or like translate. So the different stuff like that. It just all depends on like what you want to do from the site and then like also the card writing and letter writing to others, especially like elderly homes. So yeah, it, it admittedly it's been a challenge with, with community service this year because typically we partner with local service agencies like my brother's keeper or Norman Bird Sanctuary or or, or Green Animals or St. Philomena's across the street. And obviously we're limited with what we can. Uh, and can't do. Um, but um, there are plenty of, of service opportunities and in the fall um, and in the, in the spring, um, there are, um, you know, service uh, internships as an option for after school. Um, Can I have one thing to add to that? Sure. Um, each year, it's, there's a Clothe the Child event that is, goes on between the dorms and Clothe the Child is an organization where um, we raise money to buy coats and winter gear for families that aren't as fortunate and cannot um, provide that as easily for themselves. And um, so each dorm, it's kind of a dorm competition, but we try to raise, it's whoever can raise the most money for the event. And so there's been some super fun ones. I remember my sophomore year, we did an ice bucket challenge. So all the girls in our dorm, we, um, people would pay money to dump ice water on us in the middle of winter outside. So um, that got a crowd. I know a boy's dorm every year does skinny pancakes, which are just crepes and they um, sell crepes and they are making them. Um, and that's also super fun. And the dorms can get super creative, but it's always been a huge success. And that's luckily one we have been able to do even with COVID. Um, okay, it looks like uh, we just have uh, questions for one more time around the horn here. Um, and Ella, I'll stick with you um, since you're here. Um, opportunities to study abroad. Have you done any study abroad opportunities or, or what can you tell us about those? Yes, I um, luckily sophomore year going into junior year, sophomore summer, I had the opportunity to go to Rome which is with Mr. O'Connor. Um, I believe, Bo, you said that was your teacher. Um, and he's, he was great. It was so fun. I couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better experience. It's really, um, I think I grew a lot as a person there too, especially in my like, independence and responsibility, um, getting to travel to a different country with friends and teachers. And we visited um, a whole bunch of museums and we were in the center of Rome. So. It was, it was a really special experience and we visited a lot of cathedrals and churches and um, learned so much about the history and the art and um, everything. We had an awesome local tour guide who was with us every day. It was a two week trip um, in the summer and it was great. Good, good. And, and other study abroad opportunities that we have, um, you know, not only to Rome, but to um, Spain, France, England, Ireland, um, to uh, Chile, Costa Rica. So there are a number of, of different opportunities um, there. Um, okay, um, Bo, you said you played the French horn. 
uh, opportunities to try new instruments? You know, any kids that are trying new instruments or taking lessons sort of at the beginner level? I actually don't know of anyone this year starting anything new, but I know it's definitely a possibility. The uh, music teachers are really supportive in helping you learn how to play. They'll definitely, if you want to, they'll get you set up with an instrument. They'll uh, get you with a, a teacher, give you music, get you into competitions. They'll really push for you to become better if you do want to try to. And they will set things up for you if you really think you want to do that. Great. Um, just two more questions. Um, Jack, um, in terms of um, you're in your room um, or you're on campus, um, access to online. I mean, do you, do you get distracted by online games or during study hours? Do you find yourself drifting online? How do you, how do you manage that uh, and, and get to do what you need to do? Um, yeah, I had a problem with this freshman year, but you know, once you like figure out like, well, I'm not done with my work and it's the end of study hall. I mean, it really comes back to bite you at the end. So like, I basically just learn from my experiences and my um, mistakes. So I really don't get distracted much anymore. I'm just focused on my work, focused on getting everything done and making sure I'm set for everything. Great. Um, we had a question about preseason. I know many of you mentioned preseason as you were as you were talking. When does preseason start in the fall? Classes for us, registration weekend is always the weekend after Labor Day. And so uh, preseason students can come back for that the Tuesday after Labor Day, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and, and we've offered that for boys and girls soccer, field hockey, volleyball, and football in the past. Totally optional, not required, uh, but it, it's certainly an option for students um, to get back a week early. And then the last question that I think we had, so Zena, um, where do you study on campus? You're in the science building right now. Um, where do you typically do your homework? Um, yes, yeah, so currently I'm in the science building, um, but for a study hall, when we have study hall, we do it in our dorms, in our rooms, in our dorms. We all have our desks there, so it's not really, like, bad, but I know, like, sometimes me and my roommate don't really feel like studying in our room just because, like, it really gets distracting when you're, like, in your comfort zone. So we do come here exactly where I am, or, like, we could stay downstairs or, like, in the actual science common room itself. There are many different places. When it's nice outside, you could stay outside and study, but I know like it all depends on when you want to study, but for study hall, it's in your room. Great. Speaking of study hall, it's 8.05. I promised I'd get you guys to it, uh, and I'm a man of my word. So I appreciate um, the four of you taking the time um, to tell us about your experiences. Some great questions from the audience. Um, thank you all so much uh, for spending an hour with us tonight uh, and learning more about Portsmouth Abbey, you know, as I said at the end of the faculty meeting, and I'll say it again tonight, you know, we're, we're definitely very fortunate to be in a beautiful location, to have amazing facilities, um, but it's the people that make this place so special. Um, our students, our faculty, um, you know, they, they've, they talk about community and they mean it. Uh, it's, it's a very special place. So um, thank you, uh, Ella, Zena, Jack, Bo, for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. And to everyone else, thank you so much. We've got our last one of these a week from today. Uh, it's going to be for parents. So all you parents out there, it's your chance to hear from some Portsmouth Abbey parents uh, about their children's experiences and having their kids live away from home or be a day student and go to classes six days a week uh, and, and all those types of things. Um, so mark your calendars uh, for a week from today uh, for a chance to parents ask a lot of questions, which will be great. Um, so with that, Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your night, okay?